I think it's my default setting. Uh, I just have always been, I come from a family of creative people and I guess creativity was encouraged right from the start. And I didn't know until after high school that I really wanted to go into art, but I'd been doing it for many years and one thing or another, it was going to be some creative direction. And I applied at an art school as one of the things that I got in. And that sort of settled it for me. And once I got going, it was, yeah, this is, it definitely is what, what I want to be doing. Um, I've done a lot of other things in the meantime, but always somehow connected to visual creativity. And um, it's just all like having different paintbrushes. It's different parts of the same creative sort of drive. I've always been a divergent thinker and I see things and it allows my mind to wander. And I suppose you could say I use my subconscious, um, but it just seems to, I, I find ideas that appeal to me. And much like in this exhibition and quite a lot of the previous work I've done revolves around the idea of uh, deception or faking things. Uh, it appeals to me, the, the idea of a magician doing a magic trick. And you know you're being fooled, but there's something thrilling about being fooled and, and knowing that, you know, he, he's done something that you can't tell, but it, it makes it exciting. And that, I think, is something I look for in my work. I, I like the idea of people wanting to be deceived, uh, sort of uh, letting go of, you know, preconceived notions. Um, you look at a super realistic painting or something with perspective or trompe l'oeil and you know it's fooling you one way or another, but it, it, it's something exciting about it. So, yeah, I guess that's where it comes from. I, uh, I sometimes see a rock and it just appeals to me and somehow it'll join the list of things in my head that sort of percolate away slowly until they coagulate in, into some kind of idea. I, I consciously shy away from canvas and traditional materials. Um, I've been painting on wood panels quite a while because they're less, they're more indestructible than paper and canvas. Um, and I like the idea of not having work framed, that the work exists on its own. The frame seems to, one of those things, it, it lends credibility to work. You know, this work is not an artwork until it's got a huge, big gilt frame on it. Um, my work, I like it to stand alone, so the, I construct it from lots of different materials. And the materials in themselves are part of the deception. You, you know those parts of my work aren't made of gold, primarily because I can't afford them. Um, but it, it plays on the idea of deception once again. I mean, gold and diamonds have no intrinsic value, but we bestow upon them this imaginary value that they have, and it's the same with artwork, and it's the same with the materials in the artwork. So if I said I had diamond dust mixed into my paint, it wouldn't make any difference to my work, but it would add this layer of mystique, and it's this sort of the, the, the mystique of art, much like people buying wine or other strangely valued things um, that I play on in my work and the materials I use are, are sort of dictated by, by the concept I'm trying to put across. So it's and my background in working in film and learning to make thing, fake things uh, to, to deceive uh, the viewing audience. Um, is sort of a, a thrill thing I have. It's, it's fun doing that, knowing you can make something look like wood when it's just paint on, on, a, on a surface. I'd want people who've seen the work to leave and think about the values they bestow on objects and symbols. Um, people will go crazy for a t-shirt that was worn by a celebrity and you know, it'll, it has some magical holy value or something. 
Um, and we, we have so many of those in, in fashion, in, clo in yeah, clothing, fashion, um, objects that we have, you know, expensive handbags or jewelry or uh, relics from, from whichever you know, culture. Uh, people bestow on these things enormous values that aren't really there. And I'd like people when they leave after seeing my work and, and realizing they've been deceived on purpose, that they will, they will think about other things that they see around them. You know, is this really so valuable? Or can a, can a garbage can actually be more valuable than a $6,000 handbag? Um, it, it depends on, I suppose, the, the importance and the, the role that something like that plays. So that, that's what I want people to leave with, is to question the, the values of the many, many things that we collect.